um, over the speaker and and over um, the ones that are on the line that are calling in and for the prodigals. Let's just all pray for that right now. In Jesus' name, God, we come before you, Lord. the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. What a beautiful time of prayer. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Just sending out invites so that others can join in. Uh, if you're not able to do this and listen to us live, you can go back and, and listen to the recording. And uh, we have scheduled Reverend Blake Fletcher with us. I believe it's very timely uh, and uh, very uh, needed today and our subject is on day 20 of 90 days of prayer is fresh mercy fresh mercy so praise the name of jesus lord we just come before you god and commit this hour to you we commit ourselves lord our attentions god you have our full focus lord we want you to speak we want you to encourage we want you to strengthen us lord strengthen the body of believers as we see the return of our prodigals god strengthen us and empower us as never before lord i thank you for fresh mercy i thank you for god for what you have done in our lives and what you will continue to do in the lives of our prodigals thank you lord for preparing our churches lord for the return lord god so that we can disciple lord all nations and disciple lord those that you send to us those that you give to us lord i thank you god and bless your name today in jesus name i want to bring brother blake fletcher to uh, minister to us as soon as possible i want to give him as much time as he needs praise the name of the lord uh, brother blake i want you to just take your liberty today uh, thank you uh, for last week's call and the prophetic word we've held on to it we are declaring it and believing that god has uh, additional word uh, a guidance and instruction today so get your pencils out get your bible out be ready to hear what the spirit of the lord is going to say to you personally and to us as a body of believers god bless you brother blake thank you sister billy thank you for allowing me to come on here this morning i uh let's just pray one more time i want to pray one more time for god's reading of the spirit god we pray to you right now god we come before you let your words be spoken this morning, God. Move man out the way. God, let us hear what your voice has for us this morning, this day, and this hour, oh God. And we'll give you the praise and we'll give you the glory in Jesus' name. I want to start off this morning and uh, I want, uh, if somebody's never heard, uh, heard me speak or, or heard my testimony or uh, know who I am at POA sister Diane and Donald Long are the uh, the ministers they lead the ministry prayer for prodigals at POA uh, it, 
came out of their uh, burden for their son. Their son was a prodigal, and uh, that is my aunt and uncle. So their son would be my first cousin, and me and Dustin were very close uh, growing up. Uh, we did everything together and uh, played basketball together, played ball together, did a lot of things together. We were very close, and then Dustin went off into the world and was a call preacher, went off into the world, and God slowly but surely brought him back. And during his time of coming back to the church, I was in his life. He actually, me and my wife actually opened our home up to him for uh, about a year or two for him to live in our home with us as he was making his way back home. Uh, so this is, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm saying this or I'm speaking to you this from experience. I'm not speaking this to you from, from uh, a minister that hasn't walked through this or, or been involved in, in a situation like this. I'm speaking to you from experience and I'm also speaking experience to you from my own life. I, uh, I would say I, I ran from God in my calling. I was kind of a Jonah. And uh, I ran from God in my calling and spent 20 years in the military. But God used that to develop me. Even though I walked away, God used my my unfaithfulness at that moment. Still working in my life to develop me. And I feel the Holy Ghost right here, right now. And I want to tell somebody, I was going to end with this, and, and I probably still will end with this to refresh your mind. But I want to begin with this now because I feel the Holy Ghost. And just because your prodigal is where they're at doesn't mean God is developing them and training them. The Bible says he uses all things for his good. If they're called according to his purpose, he uses all. It don't matter how far I go. If I got a call of God on my life, if I'm a prodigal that's been baptized in Jesus' name and received the gift of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues, it don't matter if I fall off a ten buck two. God's mercy. David said, if I make my bed in hell, there you'll be. It doesn't matter how far they'll go. God's mercy and grace will reach them. And what blows my mind about God is how he even uses that to train them and prepare them for when they do come back. Look what he did with the with the prodigal in the pig pen. He was, took a job just to be a servant to feed pigs and be in the pig pen. And it got so bad that the famine came that he was willing to even eat what he was feeding the pigs. But God prepared him to be a servant and have a servant mind in the pig pen. So when he came back to the father's house, he was ready to be a servant. And God's doing that to prodigals right now. I love how this book starts off. It starts off in Lamentations 3, 22 through 23. And I'm going to use that passage of scripture from 22 through 25 to, to end with today. So just, just stay with me and we're going to stay in Lamentations at the end. But I want to read how the book goes because I love the book. It says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning and great is your faithfulness. I, I weep. And I feel the Holy Ghost right now because God's compassion has never failed. I want somebody to understand that God, when he performed miracles, he had compassion. And the New Testament, when he performed miracles, the Bible says he looked upon them with compassion. God's compassion is what caused miracles to come forth from Jesus. It's what caused virtue to flow in healing to the woman with the issue of blood. God's compassion never fail. And they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Understand this. His compassions never fail. And they are new every morning. The Bible says the mercies of God are new every morning. The goodness of God is new every morning. And great is your man. That God's compassions never fail. Every morning we wake up, there's a formula for a miracle to happen in our lives. Every day there's a new there's a new door open because the Bible, the word of God says it will not return void. And I like how he starts off the book. He says, Something good is coming, and I thank you for it. Even though I don't know what it is yet. Folks, I want to tell you that's faith. God gives us compassions and mercies and grace new every morning. 
every morning. But there's one piece to that formula that we have to put with it, and it's called faith. We may not see it. We may not see the faith. We hope for it. It's the evidence of things not seen. We don't see the prodigal coming home. We don't see the miracle happen in our life. But God says, you take what I have, my compassion, my mercy and grace, and you take your faith with it every morning, put it together, and come to me with it, hand it to me, and I'll perform a miracle. We may not see it yet. We may not see it that day. But one of those days, we're going to wake up, and that miracle is going to come forth that we've been praying for. That prodigal is going to walk through that door. It's going to happen. It takes consistency on our part. We must consistently pray. Jesus prayed three times in the garden before they arrested him. He was consistently praying. If you read the Bible, there were many times that Jesus taught the multitude and he went away to pray. He went by himself to pray. He went away to pray. He left them to pray. Consistency. It takes consistency on our part. And uh, the way I keep saying, I love how the book starts out because this, this passage of script, this passage of this book uses faith to start out talking to us. Something good is coming and I thank you for it. Even though I don't know what it is yet, but I know you, I know who you are, God. And your kindness is new every morning. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness to me and my daughter. Thank you that when I am tired and come to the end of my strength, your strength keeps me going. There was several days that I was tired. I want somebody to understand that when I when I when I was working with Dustin at the beginning of his of his uh and I know Dustin doesn't mind me using his story, but we we we've used it many times and, and we've talked many times about it. But there was days that I would drive over there and I would stay weeks. I would stay a week or two weeks at a time with him in Austin just to get his life back together, just to get some things back together, to just to work out some legal issues. And we just, I, I, God put me in his life and I had to do that. And there was times that my strength, I didn't have the strength to do it. I was tired. I was worn out. But the Bible, but he says, your strength keeps me going. God gives us strength every day. It's what his mercy is for. It's what his grace is for. He gives us that strength, new mercies every day. He gives us new strength every day. He gives that to us. And he says, my flesh and my heart may fail. But you are the strength of my heart forever. And he used references in Psalms 73 and 26 as the strength of my heart forever. Ask God today for strength as you pray for your prodigal. As you hope with faith for your prodigal to come on. Ask him to give you strength. Not only is the mercies good for your prodigal, pray that for your prodigal. But also pray the mercy, the strength, and grace for you. And I'm going to end with Psalms with Psalm 23 and 6 in a little while, and then we're going to go to Lamentations. But David said, you know, David said, sure, the goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's, that's for us. My life. My life encompasses my prodigal. My life encompasses my children and my, and my wife. My life encompasses my, my father and my mother and my brother and my sister. My life encompasses my family so i can apply that scripture even though it's my life my life encompasses that i let the lord know lord let this follow to my mom and dad let this follow to family members of mine that are prodigals right now let this go to them because it's my life god that's part of my life and if it follows me it has to go to them too lord See, we got to get the, we got to get outside the box. We put ourselves inside of a box and we say, this is how it's supposed to work. And Jesus says, no, that's not how it's supposed to work. I'm outside this box over here and I got greater things for you. We have to think with the mind of Christ. Paul said, put on the mind, let the mind of Christ be in us. That's also in Christ Jesus. We got to start thinking big like Jesus because our God's big. You know, I've referenced this many times in in in, in teaching uh, prophetic praying, and and there's a there's a saying that uh, Brother Terry Westbrook taught me, and Brother Joe Moore taught me. Prayer is going to, into eternity and changing time before time catches up with you. 
we have to understand that God is in our past, present, and future. He's in eternity, but we're in time. We're encapsulated by time. But he's in eternity. And he sees all things. He knows all things. He sees the end. He sees the beginning to the end, the end from the beginning. He sees it all. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He told Moses to go tell the Israelites that I am. That's all they need to hear is that I am. I am the I am has sent me, has sent you. He's the I am. He's I am everything. God of all gods. I am the Lord of all lords. I am the God of your past. I am the God of your present. I am the God of your future. Why? Because I am in eternity. So he sees us encapsulated in time, but he can manipulate. God has the power, and I should—I don't know if manipulate is the right word, but he can, he can go into our past and even our prodigal's past. He can change our prodigal's past and then go change their future and then bring it to them in the present. We have to get outside of our box and begin to pray big prayers. You know, the Bible says not to pray amiss. Don't pray a prayer that that, 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 that don't hit the target. We need to hit we need to pray target prayers. We need to pray target prayers. And I heard a man preach a sermon just a couple of days ago. Uh I was there when he preached it. Uh, what target are we praying for? You know, there, there, there was a, a Olympic gold medalist. I don't know his name right now. He had one shot to make, and he would have, he would have won, he would have won it all. He had it in the bullseye. He pulled the trigger, and he hit the bullseye. But come to find out, he was aiming at the wrong target, and he and he m- missed the winning shot. Had it all sewed up. All he had to do was just he hit the target. He didn't even have to he didn't even have to make a bullseye. He just had to hit the paper on the target. And he would have won. That's how far ahead he was. And while he was aiming, he didn't realize he was aiming at the wrong target. He cross fired and hit his competitor's target, bullseye. What target are we aiming at? We got to get outside the box and we got to ask God sometimes, how do I need to pray for this? What's the target to pray for this, Lord? And when God reveals that, that's what we pray. God is faithful. He is, his mercies are new every day. And we got to pray those into our prodigal's lives. They're coming home. They are coming home. God, in the last, I have heard more prophetic words given about prodigals in the last six months than I have in a long time. I believe this, and I want somebody to believe it with me. I believe that the prodigals, this is this is Blake Fletcher's personal belief. I believe before the greatest revival happens that there will be a great move of God in the lives of prodigals. Because I believe that the revival that is coming to America, that is coming to the world, is so great that God's going to need all of his children in the kingdom ready to receive this. And that means our prodigal's lives play an important role. Why do you say that, Blake? I, I say it this way. Because they know. They, they, they've been in the world. They know... What, what, how they think. You know, there's an old saying, you want to catch a, a thief, think like a thief. They know, they know what they're into. They've seen it. They've probably been there with them. They know what they need to do to help these people come to God. And here's the greatest, here's the beautiful thing about prodigals. They know the truth. They know the truth. The Bible says, train up a child in the way they just go and they shall not depart. That's a promise from God. They shall not depart. That means they will not depart. They're not going to depart. They may try to, and they may go off there for a few years, but eventually God's going to humble them and bring them back. Now, I want to say this to people. When we pray the mercy to God, God doesn't judge them when we pray those mercies on them. But when he begins, there's a difference between judgment and humbleness, being humbled. When God begins to put them through their situations to humble them, 
that's where we have to be there to love them. Because when they become humbled, they need somebody to hold them and show them the correct way. When they become humble, we as the parents, we as the people that are praying them back home, have to have an eye to see that God is humbling them. And we must be there to help God and lead them. Because when we bring them back into the kingdom, you see, the prodigal was humble. He was humble. He was humble enough to go back to his father and say, Dad, I just want to be a servant in your kingdom. I just want to be a servant in your in your in your palace. That's all I want to be, Dad. I don't want to be nothing else. I just that's all I want. To, I know it's better to be a servant in your home than be out there being a servant feeding pigs. And see, the father had enough sense and the and enough awareness in the in the story of the prodigal that he didn't run out and judge. He knew he needed to have mercy too. If God has mercy for our prodigals, then we need to show mercy. I feel the Holy Ghost right there. We need to show mercy. We don't need to judge them coming back home. It really doesn't matter what they've been in. It don't really matter who they are. That's why that big brother spirit inside of churches has got to be prayed out. That gossip, God hates, that's the worst thing God hates the most is gossip. And that's what happens when prodigals come home with people who want to gossip. They're the man, you know what they've been through. You see what they've done. And we forget that God's given us mercy and grace because we're just a filthy sinner just as much as they are. Paul said, I die daily. Paul said he had to repent every day because there was something that he said or something that he did that wasn't pleasing to God. Every sin's the same. See, we have a problem in the church is that we want to put the greens on sin. And God said, no sin is greater than the other sin. If I steal a piece of bubble gum or I murder somebody, it's still sin to God. It doesn't matter. That same sin's going to send me to hell if I'm not going to repent over it. But when these prodigals come home and they repent, we've got to have mercy. We've got to have love. And we gotta tell them it doesn't matter what they did. We gotta wrap our arms around them. We gotta put the rings on their fingers. We gotta put the new robe on them. We gotta put the sandals on them. You see, mercies are new every day. If I don't show mercy, God forbid that I don't show mercy. Because if I can't show mercy, and here I am praying for mercy, I don't believe God's not gonna give me mercy if I don't show mercy. See, we have to do our part too. We have to show mercy. We have to show it. We have to give a grace. When God gives us grace, we have to give, give them a grace to walk back into the church and love them. And I'm going to tell you what, I've said this over and over. It's not easy. When Dustin walked back into my life after five or six years, not calling me, not talking to me, wouldn't say a word to me. I see him sometimes in public. He would see me, not knowing that I saw him, but he would see me. And walk the other direction. And I remember that phone call that one night. He said, Blake, I want to see my parents. And I said, Dustin, let me call them. I called his parents for him, told him where he was at, and he got in touch with his parents. The next day, Dustin called me and said, Blake, can you take me back to Austin and get some things? That's when I fell into, I could have told Dustin no. I could have said, you had not talked to me in five years. Why do you think I want to help you out right now? I could have had the big brother mentality. But no. I said, Dustin, sure, I'll do it. Whatever you need me to do, I'll do it. And that started an eight-year journey for me being in Dustin's life. And I've seen some things, and I, 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 I don't want to talk about some of the details, but I loved him through it, and it was hard. And if you look at the book right here, he says, my flesh and my heart may fail, but you are the strength of my heart forever. I had to have strength from God to walk through that. Ain't died. Uncle Donald took care of me through all that. They they loved me to help love Dustin. It was a team effort. And it's going to take a team effort on, on, on a lot of prodigal part. It's going to take a church. It's going to take parents. It's going to take family members that, that come together as a team and don't judge and just love them through it. 
but the beauty of it is, is now I have Dustin in a prayer room every Tuesday and Thursday night. You see, I had a vision. I knew where God was bringing Dustin. I saw where God was bringing Dustin from. See, we can't see our prodigals in the pig pen. We've got to see them coming home. That's what the that's what the the father did every day. He had a vision of his son coming home, and he had faith. He said, something good is coming, and I thank you for it, even though I don't know what it is yet. The father knew that something good was coming, and every morning he went out. I believe every morning he went out, and he got on that porch, and he looked for his son coming home. And he knew that one day my son's going to walk down that road, and I'm going to be ready for him. He said, we can't give up now. Just when we think that it's never going to happen, that's when it's going to happen. We can't give up now. I, I, I told people this. When when the situation gets as worse as it is, it is, it is, you can't help it no way. There's nothing man can do. There's nothing anyone else can do. And you think it's over. That's when God says, now it's time for me. And at that moment, that's when we need to be looking for our prodigal. They, they may go to jail. They may have some legal problems they may have to go through. But, hey, all good things work for together. They're the, uh, called according to its purpose. And I'm just paraphrasing that scripture. All things work for good. We have to understand that God has a plan. See, they made a choice to run from God. So God had to make a plan to bring them back. Didn't that, didn't that what he did for all of us in the beginning? Adam walked away from God. And it took thousands of years for God to get to his plan of redemption on the cross. And now we now we can go, you know, all through that. We know, we, we, we know the story. We know how it all end, began in Genesis and how it ends in Revelation. We know the Bible. But isn't it awesome that it was just one people? If, if, if you was a Jew, if you wasn't a Jew in the Old Testament, you couldn't be saved. If even them at the time, they had to bring their sacrifice. The high priest had to bring their sacrifice and put it on the what? He had to put that blood on the what? On the mercy seat of the ark. He had to put it on the mercy seat. And when they put that blood on the mercy seat, it pushed back the sins of the Jew, Jewish people of Israel for another year. God gave them mercy for another year. But God said that wasn't good enough. I'm here to redeem all mankind. So here he comes as man in the flesh and redeems us on the cross. See, God had a plan, and he has a plan for your prodigal. He has a plan. He's grafted us in. He's made us part of the covenant. They are covenant people. I can tell you right now is keep going and putting the blood on the mercy seat. Keep going and putting your intercession on the mercy seat. Keep going and putting your sacrifice on the mercy seat. Because when God's timing and God's plan come together, your prodigal is going to walk through that door. I'm telling you, in the Holy Ghost, I know that at the end of this 90 days, we're going to see a miraculous move of God. You know, I said... I go back to my teaching on uh, that I taught with Uncle Donald M on Prodigals for Prayer, talking about Jubilee. I'm gonna go to my notes in that real quick because I think it's pretty powerful to uh, to re to reiterate that. Uh, you know, Jubilee stood for the year for release, and uh, that was a release of what? It was a release of the land. It was a release. The, the, they would they would uh, forgive all the taxes. They would forgive any debts that was at that moment in in the in the uh, in there. Let me let me. Here's my. It had a special impact on the ownership and the management of the land of Israel, according to the Book of Leviticus. Hebrew slaves and prisoners would be free, debts would be forgiven, and the mercies of Yahweh would be particularly manifest. Now. We are in the New Testament. The Jubilee starts in June. 90 days of prodigals end in June. I, I believe it's no coincidence 
that we're ending prayer for the 90 days of prodigals, that there's going to be a year of jubilee. I believe God's going to answer our prayers in this year of jubilee when it begins. 90 days of prodigals will end in June, and then there's going to, I believe there's going to be a revival of prodigals. I believe there's going to be a great revival. But I believe the, the revival of prodigals will begin first, and they will come home. Why? Because God's going to use them to minister to the people coming in. We've got to have them in the kingdom. We've got to have their knowledge. We've got to have their expertise. God's given them gifts and callings. We've got to have that. We're, we're not going to be complete in the body until the body becomes one. And I, 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 I want to say this. No, they may not look like us. They may have tattoos all over them. And we're going to have to work through some junk. But God's going to love them just as much as he loves us. That's why we've got to show mercy when God's showing mercy. It says the year of Jubilee is the year of release, and it deals largely with land, property, and property rights. Hebrew slaves and prisoners would be freed. I believe there's going to be prodigals freed come the end of this 90 days of prodigals. I believe it. There's going to be a faucet turned on, and it's going to run wide open, and there's going to be prodigals running back to the church. And we're going to have arms wide open. My prayer, my greatest prayer right now is that the church have eyes to see what God is doing and pray that pray that the church has love and mercy flowing from them to receive them. Because I believe God's going to do the work with the prodigals. I believe our greatest prayer needs to be for the church right now to be in position to receive it. And it says, the year of Jubilee was announced by a blast of a shofar, the blowing of a trumpet. How awesome is that? When we're raptured, we're going to have a blowing of the trumpet. And he says, the year of Jubilee is announced by the blowing of the shofar. I believe when they begin to blow that trumpet for the year of Jubilee in Israel, it's going to signal something in the spirit realm and prodigals are going to come home. I believe that. It's actually the 50th year of Jubilee. It's a 50 year of Jubilee, which means the golden year of Jubilee. The Latin word for you, the, the, the word in Latin means shout for joy. Jubilee means shout for joy in the Latin word. And, uh, and it deals largely with the land property and the property rights. I believe that we can go into prayer and we can begin to take some land that the devil has stolen from us. I believe there's some property that we have rights to that we may have allowed ourselves. The devil's come and stole it. We can go into the spirit realm. We can pray that and tell him to give it up and give it and go take it. The Bible t- says the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, but the violent take it by force. We got to get violent in our prayers. Not violent in our actions, but violent in our prayers. We need to get violent in our prayers. We need to go and hit the objective and take it by force. That's why I said hit our prayers with a target. Don't pray a prayer miss. Receiving in a prayer, a prayer miss. It did not feel good. It hurt me. It was called being pinned between two trucks. We've got to pray specific prayers for our prodigals. We've got to hit the target and don't pray amiss. And we storm the enemy's territory and take back what he's stolen from us with a violent force. We are weapons in the in the spirit realm for God. We are another total army. He has armies of angels, but we are also another army that God has, and that's called prayer warriors and intercessors. And moms and dads, it's called the church. The church is powerful in itself because God's given us the ability to pray the spoken word. He's given us that ability. Our sister uh, Bishop referenced the uh, book called uh, by, by, by John Eckhart, The Prayer That Routes Demons. That is a powerful book. Go find those prayers in that book. Get that book. It's all scriptures. It's all scriptures laid out for prayer. 
Pray those, find those scriptures for your prodigal. Find what you need and pray those prayers. And hit the target. Hit the target. Now, in Psalms 23 and 6, David ended that great psalm. We all know Psalm 23. We all know it. I, I quoted it. I, it was my, at the time going through getting ready to go to combat, that was one of my uh, favorite scriptures outside of Proverbs uh, 3, and five, 3 and 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. With our prodigals, we must trust God with all our heart. And we cannot lean to our own understanding. We don't understand. I don't know how God's going to do it. Beginning of a book, something good is coming, and I thank God for it, even though I don't know what it is yet. I don't know what it is yet. I don't know how God's going to do it. But I'm going to trust God with everything that I have. And I'm going to lean not to my own understanding. I'm not going to try to understand it on my own. Paul says that we can go into prayer and God will give us the knowledge that we need. He will give us the wisdom that we need. He will unfold the mysteries of God to us. I was sitting here praying, and uh, I'll be honest, I really didn't have a lot for this call this morning. I prayed all week this week, and God's taken me to different places and dealt with me about other situations that I've been praying for. God's been speaking to me other things for for, for future uh, messages and stuff, and it got down to yesterday, and I was like, Lord, I don't, I don't have anything tomorrow for this prayer call god i'm at the point at that time we were supposed to be doing it live at, at poa and i was man, i was i was on the hot seat because the lord hadn't spoken to me yet and I, I don't like moving when when the lord hadn't spoken to me yet i don't like speaking on something when the lord hadn't spoke to me yet and the lord spoke to me yesterday he says i will speak to you when i'm ready on this i said okay god i left it at that i trust him. trust the lord with all that heart Lean not to thine own understanding. Sister Bishop calls me this morning, and there was a situation that happened, and, I, and we prayed about that situation. And she said she wasn't be able to do it at because uh, she got held up with that situation. She wasn't going to be able to do it at uh, POA this morning, uh, live video. So she's just taking on the prayer call this morning. So I come upstairs and I said, Lord, I, I still don't have anything. I, I, I need you to talk to me. At about 9 o'clock, the Lord began to deal with me about some things. He started showing me in the Word. Just He just started bringing to my remembrance some, some biblical characters that were prodigals. The first one was Jonah. I don't know if I've ever looked at Jonah as being a prodigal until this morning at about 9 o'clock. The Lord spoke to me. He says, when Jonah decided to go to Tarshish, and not do the will of God that I told him what I called him to do in Nineveh, he became a prodigal. When he walked away from my will, the Bible says in Jonah that he tried to run from the presence of God. He was trying to get away from the presence of God. See, that's what prodigals have done. They've run from the presence of God, but what they don't realize is God's omniscient, God's omnipresent, God's all-powerful. So wherever they go, God's there. You can't run from the presence of God and you can't run from your calling. I need to bring some hope to some people this morning. Your prodigal can run all he wants to. But that saying goes, you run all you want to, but you can't hide. You see, you can't hide from God. Now, the circumstances they will have to go through to come back home, God will have mercy through it, but he will use circumstances to humble them. It's a process. And we have to be ready for that process. 
It is a process. I'm telling you, it's work and it's process. Oh, but the process is beautiful as God's unfolded. If you stay in the process, in God's process, not my process, not ain't dying Uncle Donald's process, not Dustin's process, but God's process, God's will, how God wanted to unfold, it's beautiful. God opens it up and it becomes beautiful. He says he makes ugly things, he makes it beautiful. He uses the, the dumb things of this world to confound the wise. Uses the weak things of the world. And see, Jonah ran from God. He went to Tarshish. What was his circumstance? Where did God use the humbling? God put him on a ship in a bad storm. They started casting lots. And Jonah said, it was me. Throw me overboard. See, Jonah was willing to drown. Jonah knew that he had ran so far from God that he was just ready to get it over and done with. Well, they threw him in that water and that big fish swallowed him, which I believe literally a big fish swallowed him because God can do all things. See, he was in the belly of the whale. See, that was Jonah's hell. See, God put Jonah in his hell for a little while. And I don't mean that in a curse word. I mean that literally. That God let him go through his well, old stinking fish. The belly of a stinking fish. Can you imagine how much that stunk? The stench of that? See, our prodigals are in some stench. But God said his mercies are new every day. And see, God had mercy on Jonah. And eventually he let that fish swim up to a beach and vomit him out. See, this world is a big fish right now. And it's got a lot of our prodigals swallowed. And God's going to allow them to come to their senses in the belly of that big fish. And God's going to allow that big worldly fish to spit them out at the doors of the church. They're going to stink. They're going to smell. They're going to be in rough shape. They're going to be tired. They're going to be hungry. But that's when we walk out and we put our arms around them, kiss them on the cheek, put a ring on their finger, put shoes on their feet and put a new robe on them and bring them back to the hospital called the church. You know, you look at David. David, who wrote great Psalms 23 that I'm going to reference here in a minute, Psalm 6. David was a murderer. David was a liar. David was an adulterer. We've heard the story about David so many times. Sweet little David. See, David was raised in, a, in the shepherd's pasture. He was the shepherd in the pasture. He was a shepherd's boy. Little old shepherd's boy, raised in the church, taking care of the flock, taking care of the sheep. And David went on to be king, and it got a little bit too big for his britches. I forgot who his God was there for a little while, and became a liar, and a murderer, and a adulterer. But the prophet Nathan came back to him, and told him who he was, and he repented. We have to allow the prodigal that when they come home, we have to allow them space to repent. God's already dealt with them. He don't need to deal with them anymore. The reason why they're at that church, the reason why they come home is because God's dealt with them. They've heard the voice to come home. When they decide to come home, we don't have to question God, are they home for good or not? God's already dealt with them. We just got to allow them space to repent. We got to allow them space to repent. We got to allow them space to gather themselves. And we love them through that. Are they going to make the perfect and right decisions? No, nope. we don't either. I miss it sometimes. But that's the beauty about God because his mercy is new every morning. When I wake up every morning, I go back to what I started off with. It's the ingredients tied to my faith. For a miracle. Psalms 23 and 6 says this, Surely goodness and mercy 
shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's my life. That's my life. And I will. My children will. My wife will. My family will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I pray that prayer. Psalm 23 and 6 is a powerful psalm. One of the most powerful psalms there is. But it ends with goodness and mercy. The grace and mercy of God. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of our lives. There's several Bible characters that you can use to show that they were prodigals. David, King David became a prodigal. He walked away from God's presence, started doing things that were sin. He became a prodigal. But he listened to the voice of God. When they listen to the voice of God and they come home, we've got to allow them that time to repent. And we begin to build with them. And we do it at God's pace, not at our pace. We do it at God's pace. God loves them right where they're at. Like I used Jonah, this big old world is eventually going to spit them out. There's an anointing on their lives. There's a calling on their lives. You can't run from that. You see, I couldn't run from it. I went to the military my whole life. I graduated high school. My parents said at 17, I was standing in basic training, running from the call of God on my life. Raised in this. All my life, like a little David, a little shepherd boy, taking care of the sheep, taking care of the, sh the flock. I didn't have no other talent. My talent was baseball, fishing, and hunting. That was my talent. I didn't have musical talent. Even though I was an outgoing person, I wasn't a big orator. Never have been a, 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 a great orator. But God had a prophetic call on my life. I know more about it now than I did then, but I ran from the presence of God. And because of God's mercy, he got me through a many things in my life that I've been through. But there was a space and time that God allowed me that the old world spit me out. I thank God I had an aunt and uncle named Diana Donald that loved me. And you see, because they loved me, God put me in their son situation. I love them. God works in mysterious ways. So we go back to Lamentations, and I'm going to end with this and give it to Sister, Bill, Sister Bishop. It says, because of the, uh, I'm going to go to, I'm going to read the whole Lamentations 22 through 25 in chapter 3. I'm going to read chapter 3, 22 through 25. It says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is his faithfulness. See, his mercies are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness every morning. He's faithful with that mercy every morning. I mean, God's faith is with that mercy every morning. You see, God's faith is the gift of faith. And so when I take my faith and I put it with the gift of faith, there's a mercy there, that there's a miracle in the making. Hallelujah. Every morning. Every morning, I started an ingredient. Eventually, I'm going to make a biscuit. I'm going to put the dough together. I keep putting the dough together consistently. I keep kneading that dough. I knead it every morning. I knead that dough. You know, if anybody's ever made a dough, that you take it and you knead it. There's a, and then you got to put it together like when you're making bread, you put it and put it in the refrigerator. Sometimes it's got to get in the refrigerator and it's got to rise. See, there's a time in there. That we, it, just because you put the ingredients together doesn't mean there ain't no other action. You got to knead it. You got to let it rise. You got to put the yeast with it. And see, we keep doing that consistently. Eventually, it's going to be time to put it in the oven. While we put it in the oven, it's going to come out bread. You see, we keep putting our prayers in the oven. We keep giving them to God. We keep giving them up to God. Eventually, it's going to come out. And there's, and there's coming a time that product is coming home. We just got to be consistent with it. Hallelujah. It says, the Lord is my portion, yes. saith my soul. Therefore, will I hope in them, verse 24. 
Therefore, will I hope in him. I have faith in him. I hope in him. I don't see it. I don't know what's coming yet, but I hope in him. He is my portion. And the Lord is good unto them that wait for him. To the soul that seeketh him. What is amazing about this verse right here in verse 25, it ends with, to the soul that seeketh him. I let my soul seek him on my prodigal house. I let my soul go to him and I pray in that tongue and I let the Lord make that intercession. I, I pray those groanings and those moanings and I let it go to the Lord in intercession because he knows how to pray for my situation. You know, I don't have time to go to the scripture, but uh, I tell people, if you want to pray the will of God in your life, pray in the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible says praying in the Holy Ghost, that's praying the will of God. How you pray the will of God to pray in the Holy Ghost. You let that tongue go forth and you pray and you pray in tongues. You pray about that situation in tongues and you let the Holy Ghost make it the intercession. We may not see this happening right now in our lives, but God's mercy is working every day. God's goodness and his grace and his mercy is working every day. Every day, it's putting all the ingredients together, and eventually, it's going to come out. Eventually, that product was coming home. And I believe that that revival is coming. I believe that revival's already started. We've seen a trip, and we've heard of some product was coming home already. And as they keep coming, it's just going to build and build and build, and we're going to see a mighty revival. Sister Bishop, you can come on. I'm going to go ahead and pray, and I'm going to hand it over to you. Okay. God, I love you right now. You. If y'all want to come home, if y'all want to come on and pray with Hallelujah. me, God, I pray Jesus. right now. Thank you, God, I pray for every parent and every home out there that has a prodigal in it right now. They may not see it all coming. God, your mercy and your grace is new every day. God, I pray your mercy into their situation. God, I pray your mercy into our lives, oh God. We've got to have your mercy. And God, as you give us mercy, we've got to be able to give that mercy out and love. We've got to be able to love them coming home. We've got to be ready for them when they come home. We don't need judgmental spirits. We don't need gossiping spirits, God. We just need your mercy flowing through us to them. We just need your love flowing through us to them. God, make our churches ready. God, if our churches' hearts are hardened right now, God, soften their hearts, oh God. Soften our churches' hearts right now. Right now, God. Let them be ready, oh God. Let them be ready for the prodigal coming home. Let them have arms wide open, oh God, that it doesn't really matter what they've done. We're all sinners saved by grace. God, when we get down to it, I'm just a sinner as much as they are. And God, I gotta have your mercy just as much as they do. God, I pray your mercy on us, oh God. I pray your grace on us, oh God. God, I pray that you work in every single situation that's on this phone call right now. The people that hear this teaching this morning, oh God, you flow through it this morning, oh God. This was not man's words, these were your words. And God, I pray that you touch the mind of every, every, one, of every father and mother out there right now. I pray you touch the minds of children, God, that their parents are proud of right now, God. Touch the minds, God. Let us see it, oh God. Let us have eyes to see and ears to hear what you have for us and what you're bringing us to. In the name of Jesus, God, let your mercy and your goodness and your grace follow us all the days of our lives. Let it follow our children wherever they're at, oh God. And whatever they're doing, oh God, let your mercy and your grace follow them, oh God. Let your mercy and grace follow them. Bring them back home, oh God. Let us be ready to accept them. God, I pray this in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for what we feel on this phone call right now. I thank you for your presence right now, God. I thank you for your spirit right now, God. God, let your angels be dispatched. Let them go and do your work right now, God. Let them go to where the chronicles are at, God, and begin to whisper in their ears, come home. 
God, let it begin to come forth, oh God. I pray that it come forth, oh God. Let it be set in place. Let it go into motion now, oh God. And we give you the glory. We give you the praise. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Just a bishop is yours. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, my friend. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, brother Blake Hallelujah. Fletcher. Praise the Lord. Yesterday, after the teaching, I have to confess, yesterday was very challenging for me. I, I felt like I was pulling and fighting for every word of faith, knowing situations and circumstances that families were in that were desperate for an answer. But, Brother Blake, you, you brought back to my remembrance, and I believe God is speaking to me about a devotion that I will teach as the Holy Ghost gives me the unction to do this. But there is a story, in wrapping this up, if I may, there is a story of a, it's a true story, of a young man who was a U.S. soldier. And this soldier was missing in action during the Vietnam War. And when... The family could get no word of their son, their brother, no word through any official channel. The other son, the brother to this missing soldier, flew. It's a true story. He flew to Vietnam and risking his own life, he searched the jungles, walked through the battlefields looking for his lost brother. It said that despite the danger, he was never hurt. Even from the enemies firing, God protected this man. Because those on both sides, listen to me, both, those on both sides had heard of his dedication and respect upon his search for his brother. Some of them called this, this brother simply the brother. The brother. This is what the elder brother in the parable that we read in Luke 15 should have done. He should have done that. He should have been the true elder brother to go out and search for his, his lost brother. The father said when the, when the prodigal came back from the pig pen, My son was dead, but now he's alive. He was lost and now is found. And he called forth a celebration. The elder brother, he was angry and he the he went out the father went out to search for him and the older brother refused to go in and celebrate he refused so his father went out and pleaded with him the scripture says pleaded the father pleaded with the elder brother and he answered him and said father look look this is judgment look all these years i've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders Yet you never even gave me a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. His friends, Brother Blake, his friends didn't know about the celebration at the father's house because the elder brother had never reached out to his friends to let them know there was a, there was a celebration at the father's house. There was meat enough. His friends weren't even aware. The elder brother had the inheritance. It was already divided. That robe and that ring belonged to the elder brother when the father passed. God was using this beautiful parable to show the mercy of God. He was telling the Pharisees that the father's love is long and enduring and will reach past legalism, will reach past tradition. All that mattered to the father was that his son was lost and his elder brother was lost as well. He was lost in his moral convictions, his religion, his tradition. He was as lost as the young man that had wasted his uh, inheritance on prostitutes. In fact, the elder brother threw it up in the father's face. You read it in scripture. He said, but when this son of yours, he wasn't even no longer his brother. This was the attitude.
attitude and the Lord wants us to see it today. I don't think there's anybody on this call, Brother Blake, or anybody that's listening from Facebook Live that's bound by the elder brother spirit. But we as a church need to know how to pray. But when the, the son of yours, he called it, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fatted calf. He threw this young man's past in the face of the father. And this is what the father said. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad. And I'm paraphrasing. It's in another translation because this brother of yours, see, he put it back on him. Brother Fletcher, this is what God revealed to me as you were speaking today. When the elder brother said, this son of yours. And the father spoke back and said, this brother of yours. Your brother was dead and is alive again, and he was lost and now is found. Jesus went to Calvary to show the greatest expression of mercy. Jesus allowed his robe and his authority to be stripped from him. Jesus allowed the casting of the lots upon the cross when he hung there naked. Jesus allowed this. Because of his great mercy and of his great love. Brother Blake, I sat across in a courtroom when they were sentencing the man that was responsible for my son's death. And when I went to see him, and I shared this testimony many times. But when I went to see him in the San Francisco jail, I saw, I saw that broken man. And I understood what mercy was. I experienced the mercy from the father of mercy to this broken young man. Mercy that a man is not capable of giving. But yet we who are filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost are filled with the father of mercy. God is mercy itself. And I'm so thankful today for what you have yes. shared. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that Jesus allowed himself to be stripped. He was a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Jesus is that friend. Jesus loves our backsliders. He's married to the backslider. God has changed our perspective. We are on day 20. 30 days, I said the first 30 days, we, we are going to be changed. But I want to encourage, and I know there's a group that have gathered at their church today. They're at the altar. They're at the altar, Brother Blake, and they're listening to this word wow. today. And we want to pray wherever your altar is. We want to pray and join with the Father and prepare the celebration. Every one, every time there's a, a prodigal that comes trickling in and you get it sent to your messenger or you see it on Facebook po posts, rejoice. Because that prodigal was dead and is now alive again. The mercy of God has now found another backslider. What Jesus endured on the cross has been fulfilled in the restoration, the saving of the sinner and the saving of the backslider. How powerful, how powerful is the blood of Jesus Christ who suffered the shame, endured, endured the cross. For the joy, the joy, the joy of the celebration. Jesus and your backslider are going to celebrate. And it's going to be a great celebration. And they that are dead will become alive again. Praise the Lord. I'm going to open the line. And I want us to pray another corporate prayer. Thank you for those of you who have joined us on day 20. It's the top of the hour. I've listened intently, and I've asked the Lord, God, how do I apply this to my own prodigals? And the Lord just kept reminding me of what he had done on Calvary. It infuses my faith. It gives me fresh hope. When I see the Father of mercy, when I look at the parable of the lost coin and the lost sheep and the lost sons, and I see the generosity and mercy of the Father. It gives me faith to approach Him. He's the one that saves. We are the ones 
that put our arms around the prodigal and embrace them. There's a lot of embracing to do in the next year. In this year of Jubilee, as the prodigals return, we need to be enabled to love them, to empower them. They face a judgment seat. They face the judgment of men. They face the judgment of a church that knew them before they left the house of prayer. But as any good judge, when a man approaches the judge's bench and he begins to speak into that heart of that convicted criminal and he sentences him, many judges will talk about mercy. Many judges will talk about accountability. Many good judges will talk about, son, I believe that you can turn this around. We're going to help you walk away from this addiction. This sentencing isn't permanent. We're believing that you are being sentenced for your crimes so that you can be restored back to your families. That's human judgment. But there is a judge that sits on the throne of mercy that will give our prodigals the very power to be restored. He will come within them, come alongside them as the advocate, as the defender, and he will equip them. Let's pray today. As we begin, we've been praying this whole hour. I trust you have received. So I have re- I have received something fresh today from this word. God, I thank you, Lord God. We're lifting our voices together. God, we ask you, God, to save the elder brother, to open up his eyes, to cause him, Lord God, to be that running brother that will run to and search for the backslider. We'll look to and fro, God. We'll go to that backslider through the power of intercession and prayer and be ready, oh God, ready to receive, ready to celebrate. God, empower us, Lord God. Help us see your your tender mercies, Lord God, and let it give us a gifting of faith. Anoint us, Lord God, that all unforgiveness and the remembrance, Lord, of what our prodigals has done to us and done to others and done to themselves, oh God, would you lift this? Would you wash this from our minds? Let our minds, oh God, not relive, oh God, the horror and the experiences of what our backslider has done and caused to our families. But God, Lord, lose some release fresh faith fresh mercy oh god to everyone that is on the call today oh god oh god fresh mercy is what we need fresh understanding oh god of your compassion oh lord oh god break every chain tear down every stronghold wrestle down the strong man that has our backslider in the pig pen god open his eyes let him come to himself God, give us people that will love the backslider. Move upon our pastors and our leaders. God, raise up prayer groups, oh God. Lord, add to this praying intercession, God. Let there be the multitudes of many voices, oh God. Multitudes that recognize what you're doing in this latter day in the earth. Multitudes of intercessions marked by prayer. Grant that to us. Lead them to us, God. Stir us, Lord. Unite us, Lord God. Empower us and through the power of the name of Jesus. Let us truly be like the servants of the Father's house. Let us pour oil and wine into the wounds of our backsliders, Lord. Oh, God, heal the brokenhearted mother today. Heal the grandpa and the grandma, Lord God. Heal the aunt and uncle. Heal the pastor and his wife that have been wounded by the decisions and the scars, Lord. The scars, they've walked through the valley of the shadow of death. Death of faith, oh God. Death of service, Lord. Oh God, in the house of prayer, our prodigals, we call forth that they would come alive. Let us testify that once they were dead, but now they live again. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Break, oh God. Oh God, break the voice of the accuser of the brethren. Oh God, that accuses us day and night, God. Let its voice not be heard, Lord God, and the parents and the, those that pray and intercede. Let this ugly voice, God, be silenced and let them hear the voice of the shepherd. Let them to be find themselves behind the shepherd, following, pursuing, seeking the one that is lost, oh God, until he be found, until she is returned, until our daughters are restored. God, thank you for the gifting of faith. Thank you for the prophetic word that's been given to us today. God, we worship you. We remember, oh God, today. They stripped you of your garments, Lord. They stripped you, but you willingly laid down your life. You gave up the authority as they nailed you to the cross. They crucified the Messiah. Oh, God, a backslider, Lord God, crucifies you fresh again. God, forgive them. Show them mercy and grant repentance. Expose their sins. Put people in their lives that are going to help them to be overcomers, to live victorious lives free from the bondage of sin, free from addiction, oh, God. Hallelujah. Brother Blake. I want you to pray a very powerful prayer. As a man of God, as a man of faith, there are situations more than one. I would say that there are situations today that if God does not intervene, that there is going to be a loss of life. There is going to be uh, souls that are sent into eternity because of the dangerous place that they are in right now. I know that God snatched Dustin and others from the very flames of hell, spared their lives. My prodigal was taken from this life, I believe, through a car accident allowed by God because of God's mercy. I believe that my prayers were heard and God chose to take him from this earth. And I believe my prodigal prayed in those last moments of his life because that's what my young son knew to do. He knew to pray. When he was a young son, growing up in church, he would easily enter into spiritual warfare, worship. He would easily go into speaking in that heavenly language. I remember it. I remember hearing my little boy pray in tongues. I remember him as a teenager crying out to God and weeping, God, forgive me, help me, Lord, hold on to me. I remember the words of my prodigal, hold on to me, Lord. Don't let me go this way. Give me strength. I remember those prayers. And then hearing him speak in tongues. And when he went off to, away from the protection, the protective house of God, I asked God to let the prayers of his father and the, my prayers pursue him, protect him, and let the blood go with him. And when he went out into eternity, I wasn't there to hear him pray. But he had a father, Blake. He had a father that helped him pray and enter into eternity. Oh, the mercy and grace of the Lord. How can I thank God for the death of my son? Because I know God's heart. I know his mercy. But there are prodigals today that we are praying for, that they are on the brink, Brother Blake. It's a serious matter. They are on the edge. They are on the edge with mind-controlling drugs. They are on the edge with alcohol poisoning that have been intensive care units this week, this very week. They are in situations yes. where their marriages are destroyed because of their choices. May the Father of mercy. But I want you to pray not only for these situations. God knows the names of every family. Some of them are listening right now. Some of them we are fasting for today because there is no other way to pray. But by prayer, this kind comes out by prayer and fasting. There are families that have got to make decisions. They've got to make decisions to walk away or to reach out and help. And they don't know which way to turn. But I believe like the Lord when Jesus commanded the demons to leave the lunatic. And they were driven out into the pigs. And the pigs went into the sea and was drowned. That a word from the Father of mercies will bring the lunatic to sit and clothed in his right mind. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. They're going to be sitting at the feet of Jesus and in their right 
mind, no longer naked and exposed, no longer tossed about by demonic forces and demonic spirits. So I want you one more prayer. As a man of God, I want you to pray for these search situations that we are facing as a family of intercessors. Partners in prayer, we are family. Hope Ministries, we're better together. We are a family. Go ahead, Brother Fletcher. God, I pray right now. God, you know the seriousness of the need. God, you know every need that is out there right now. God, it's life or death. God, you know there's decisions that are being made right now. God, they have to make decisions. God, I pray your wisdom, God, move on them and give them wisdom to make the right decisions. I pray your wisdom moves on the prodigal, oh God, and they come out of what they're out of. Oh, God, let your wisdom come. Let your mind go into them right now, God. Whatever choices they are making, God, let them know that it is better at the Father's house. God, wake them up to where they are at. God, we intercede, oh God. We ask you right now, God, to, to spare, God, to spare the life, oh God, to spare the prodigal, God, to spare the parents in this situation right now, God, these situations, these dire needs, oh God. You know, God, the reach, God, I know the reach that you can reach with, oh God. I know how far, you know how far they can go, oh God, but I know how far you can reach, oh God. And I know you can reach all the way on the other side of the earth with a prayer right now. Wake up a prodigal. God, I, I, I ask right now that you begin to intervene in these situations right now. God, I ask that you move, oh God. The only answer is you right now, God. There is no other answer. Man can't do anything else, oh God. You are the answer. You are the answer, oh God. We're putting our hope and our faith in you. We're doing what your word says, oh God. And God, I pray right now that you intervene right now and you spare what needs to be spared, oh God. Let your perfect will come forth in these situations, oh God. Call them back home. Bring them back home. Settle the nerves, oh God. God, let them know that the drugs that they're taking, the alcohol that they're drinking, God, is not the answer. But God is the answer. I bind every demon out right now. I bind every demon that's lying or has a filthy mouth, the father of all lies. I bind them right now for the lies that they are telling prodigals right now. I command their mouths to be shut on the authority of the word of God so that the word of God can go forth through them and they can hear it clearly right now. I bind every spirit coming against them. I bind the spirit of drugs. I bind the spirit of alcohol. I bind that spirit of division right now, oh God. I bind it on the authority of the word of God. And I lose your power and your authority in it, oh God. Your, your authority, God. Your power to save, oh God. Your power to spare, oh God. I lose your mercy and your grace in it right now, oh God. Do your work, oh God. Do your work right now. Do the work that only you can do, oh God. We'll give you the glory for it, oh God. We'll give you the glory for it, oh God. Let it happen today. In the mighty name of Jesus, let it be done. In the mighty name of Jesus, let it be done, O God, according to your will, according to your way, O God. In the name of Jesus, let it come forth. Let it come forth, O God. We speak life into these situations. We speak life into these situations right now, God. We speak love and your mercy in it right now, God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we give you the glory, O God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe the Holy Ghost has, has ministered to us. Brother Larson, go ahead. Please go ahead. Yes. Thank you, uh, Brother Fletcher, for what you spoke today. And while you were speaking, I, I felt very uh, a burden come over me um, as far as prodigals that are sitting on the pew, that elder brother spirit, uh, that yes. they're just as lost yes, they are. as folks that are outside. Yes, they are. 
And I just want it to direct and have a focused prayer towards the prodigals and the, those that have grown cold in the mm-hmm. relationship that are sitting on the pews. Oh, and just direct our prayer towards them because they're just as lost as yes. the prodigals outside. Yes, Jesus. Yes. Yeah, we pray right oh, now for those prodigals sitting on the pews, oh God. Yeah, they're coming to the house of God, but they're just not hearing, oh God. They're just not okay. doing, oh God. God, wake them up from their slumber, oh God. Yes. Paul wrote in, in 1 Corinthians at 15, but some are still asleep. Yes. There were 500, God, he wrote, there were 500 that saw you leave. There's 500 that you directed to go back on the mountain. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians that but some are asleep. God, they're asleep on our pews, oh God, and they don't even know that they're prodigals. They're calling prodigals from a prodigal standpoint. They don't even see it, oh God. They don't even see the sin that they're in. God, wake them up. Wake them up, God. It's the third hour right now, God. We're in the garden at the third hour. Wake them up, oh God. Let them see where they're at. God, that they have a call on their life, oh God. God, they're not just saved by paying their tithes and coming to church, but they got to be active, oh God. They've got to become servants. Wake them up to a servant heart, oh God. Let them be active in the church right now, God. Let them fulfill the roles that they're supposed to fulfill in their churches right now, God. God, I pray that you move on them right now. God, I pray that this Sunday services move them right now. That there be conviction go across all of the apostolic churches in America, oh God that wakes up the prodigal sitting on the pew. I pray it right now. I release your anointing to go forth to these services, oh God, that they wake up, that they begin to redig the wells, oh God. The wells that been done for, for years, oh God. Let them redig the wells, oh God, even the wells that they've done, oh God. Let them begin to redig those wells, oh God. Let those, let those, let those let the flow again, oh God. Let those dams burst open one more time, oh God. Let a revival come to the, just inside the church on the pews, oh God. Let it come forth in the name of Jesus. We speak this over them right now, God. We release it right now, God. In the name of Jesus, let it come forth. In Jesus' name, you do the work, oh God. You do the work, oh God. You do the work. Hallelujah. Thank you, Conviction, oh God. Let conviction come forth, oh God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. God bless Jesus. God bless each one. Lord. You will not find a place to go, a place to pray, friends to lean upon, greater than Hope Ministries partners in prayer, all of us, each of us. If you're new to this call, we invite you to join and min, excuse me, mingle your voice with what God is doing in this earth. He is showing forth mercy. But the door is closing. The ark is closing. The end of this age is upon us. I have listened to Brother Stone King, and if any of you have listened to him recently, that we're in the day of the mud. Everything is muddy, but God has provided an ark. God has provided a way out. Yes, the earth will be destroyed by fire, but we are making ourselves ready. The Bible teaches us to snatch them from the very flames. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow at 10 o'clock, we're going to be in day 21. Sister Tracy Holmes is going to be speaking to us. She's one of our partners in prayer leaders. She's a mother of prodigals, a pastor's wife. Her and Brother Holmes in Seattle, Washington are church planners. The subject tomorrow is take heart. Take heart. In the world you're going to have tribulation, but be of good courage. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. Would you please share this recording with someone? If you believe God is doing a work, in your prodigals, in your city. Would you please be bold enough to share this? Would you invite somebody to dial in tomorrow with you or to 
uh, listen on Facebook Live, and let's come into the presence of the Lord. Tonight at 7 o'clock, there will be another prayer call. It will be open prayer requests. You can dial in. There is men and women of God that will pray with you. We don't take many prayer requests on Tuesdays. Sometimes we hang up on Facebook Live and we pray for you individually. It's just however the Spirit of the Lord moves. But today, the Lord has spoken to us that we have in Him fresh mercy. So let's walk in that knowledge today that God is merciful. He can save to the uttermost. Let's take our hands off, stop trying to fix or change them, and allow God. But enter into battle with Him by praying the Scriptures. Who can carry this to the end of the 90 days? Who can be faithful? How? What other, what other prayer is more pressing upon you than the salvation of your children? What is more critical? What is more important? I challenge you. I challenge you. To determine that you're going to either listen to the recordings, you're going to pick up your book, you're going to set aside days of fasting, you're going to listen and you're going to pray and you're going to be a doer, not just a hearer. You're going to look for prodigals in your city. You're going to pray for the names of the ten I challenge you to pray for. Let's become involved with what God is doing. I want to do what God is blessing. And the door has been opened. The door has been opened to the return of the prodigals. I don't know when that door will shut. But I do know that God has called you and I. We are accountable and we are encouraged and we're being ministered to and we're being healed and we're being strengthened for the purpose of this end time revival. We're the bride of Christ. He is enabling, edifying, building and speaking and guiding and correcting us for the purpose of his kingdom work in this earth. Hallelujah. God bless every one of you. If you have personal requests that are urgent, please message me. Message me, Billy Jean Bishop. I will make sure that your children's names are in our prayer bottles. I will make sure if you're a prayer leader, a prayer coordinator, please message Donald Long, Donald Long, and they're going to connect your group, your prayer group. And get you involved with the hundreds of churches around the world in this 90 days of prayer. And so I encourage you, if you have questions, message me, Billie Jean Bishop. God bless you, Brother Blake. Thank you again. I don't know when we'll get to have Fletcher. you back. But I hope it's at the altar, Brother Fletcher. I hope it's at the altar. We have been at the Lord's altar yes. of mercy today. But there is nothing like going to your house of prayers, physical address, altar, right. and praying. So I want you to talk about that next time we right. get together. The power of the okay. altar. The power of the altar. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank right. you very much.